Full HD is so 2010. Am I right? I've been using wireless video systems for a little bit and I just got my hands on Holy Land's 4K option. So let's see how it performs while theoretically sending a lot more data through the air. The main reason I'm excited about this is because I also just got a 4K display for focus pulling, so I'm actually taking advantage of the extra resolution of 4K wireless video. Before you start gassing about this upgrade, check if your screen will get any benefits from it. Anamorphics are the reason I chose to upgrade the size of my onset monitor. We're always talking about the lens's softness and aberrations, so it's key to get proper focus, right? I already have the lens fighting against my sharpness. I don't need my first AC to be adding to the confusion. The best way to work out optimal focus is by seeing more detail on the footage, which means upgrading monitors from 1080p to 4K. This benefit would be lost if my wireless monitoring was capped at 1080p. After all, upscale 1080p versus native 4K signals are very different things. I don't know if it's just me, but looking back through all my wireless video solutions, I always had issues identifying the transmitter from the receiver and many times rigged them up backwards just to get worried the whole thing was broken and then realize my mistake. The Holy Land 4K so far has the best solution where the transmitter is tagged red and the receiver is marked blue. Easy, never making that mistake again. We have lots of power options, L mount battery, barrel connection, and my all time favorite USB-C. Having all these options means it'll likely fit within your rig without hassle. I'm also a fan of these antennae because they're so compact, keeping the rig in better shape. This 4K system boasts a range of 450 feet or just shy of 150 meters, as long as you have line of sight. As usual, you can connect a variety of devices to the wireless feed. The transmitter has four slots for monitors. A dedicated receiver takes up two slots, so you can have your transmitter and two receivers, or you can connect up to four phones and tablets to the receiver. The big thing to remember when using a phone or tablet is that the range for these devices is much shorter than the dedicated receiver. The app for phones and tablets is pretty capable, featuring all the tools to assist you with exposure, plus frame guides and anamorphic de-squeeze. These last two offer lots of options and custom values, including custom de-squeeze, which is better than most monitors out there. You can also use the app to capture screenshots and record reference videos. Holy Land claims 0.06 seconds of latency, but in my setup, the results were not that optimal, even when using the proper receiver. The first thing I did was change the mode of the transmitter to prioritize speed over quality, and still, we had a noticeable delay between the camera and monitors. I found that latency while using the app was actually better than using a dedicated receiver with a 0.3 seconds of delay to the app and 0.4 seconds of delay to the 4K monitor. It is known that Panasonic cameras add a significant delay to their HDMI out ports, so I checked for that and learned that the camera connected directly to the monitor already adds almost 0.2 seconds of delay, meaning Holy Land's transmitter is adding about the same amount. Not gonna lie, I hoped for less delay to the 4K screen. Time to get into the nitty gritty. How much better is our image compared to the 1080p feed? After all, on a wireless system for pulling focus, we'll be balancing latency and image quality. We can't have too much delay, but also if the image isn't crisp, we lose the benefit of the added resolution. I use the Sumo 19 to record these comparisons. The clip on the left uses a 1080p wireless solution upscaled to 4K and the clip on the right uses the Holy Land 4K. Now the clip on the left is a direct HDMI in from the camera. Last, we have a 5.9K clip from the camera on the right. Looking at them with a 200% punch in, we can see light artifacting on the 4K signal and some color tinge, as well as some compression refreshing. I don't see it as that much crisper than the 1080p upscale, to be honest, it definitely loses to the direct HDMI and the internal recording. At 700 bucks for the transmitter slash receiver pair, it is a noticeable price difference from the 1080p solutions in the market. If you're looking to upgrade, 
make sure the performance difference is worth the cost. And if you're in the market for something new and 4K is a requirement, there aren't any other options capable of it in a similar budget, so there you go. The second thing I'm playing with, and that will definitely simplify these talking head bits, is the Mars M1 5.5 inch monitor, which can work either as a transmitter or a receiver depending on the situation. If I plug it directly to the camera through either HDMI or SDI, I'll go on the menu and set it as a transmitter. Then you'll be able to turn it into from your phones and stuff, or use a HolyLand receiver to connect to it. But if I already have a transmitter connected to the camera, I'll set up the monitor as a receiver. It will pick up that signal and do its magic. So right now I have the 4K transmitter on the camera and I'm using the M1 to check for focus and framing. Sure, this isn't a 4K screen, but it's perfect for less critical checks, meaning it's a really good director's monitor that doesn't need a ton of stuff hanging from it, just a battery. I'm kind of disappointed it takes L-mount batteries instead of V-Lox, which would make their life on set a lot longer. The monitor has the usual tools for checking exposure and framing, crop marks, and even a set of built-in LUTs. These are all Canon and Sony, so if you're using a different camera like me, you'll want to wipe these LUTs for something that you can use. We cover all the essentials in terms of anamorphic D-squeeze, again 1.33, 1.5, 1.6, and two, so we're missing 1.8. And I just always wish we had a custom D squeeze like small HD screens. The build quality is super nice. Here's Thomas at Epic Light Media throwing it off the roof. And I like the fact that the only button on this thing is the power button. My main criticism about it is the 1000 nits brightness. It's fine for indoor stuff, but it starts to struggle in full sun situations. Battery life also sucks because the monitor is always either transmitting or receiving, so it draws a lot more power even when you don't need to use those features, and it'll go through batteries much faster than a standard monitor of the same size. The monitor costs $550, and I'm glad it comes with a screen protector and a D-tap to barrel cable since no one will really work without those. For me, the latency and the simplistic tools make it a less reliable focus monitor and more of a checking frame monitor, a mobile director's monitor, or something that I can pass off to my script supervisor that'll make them extra happy. It's also a great solution for solo shooters if you want a slightly bigger screen on your camera and give your crew the possibility to link up to your wireless signal. What are your thoughts on these two new options to wireless monitoring? I feel both the Hollyland 4K and the Mars M1 have very strong pros and cons, and that makes decisions easier when it comes to gear upgrades. They either fit your needs or they don't. I hope you got some useful info on here today, and I'll see you next episode. Thank you for watching. Chit Fathings, out.